Thanks, Anna, and thanks to the organisers for inviting us to present the latest update on our magnetite exploration story. Um, so I'm going to run through a little bit of the history of the Wyala uh, Middleback Ranges operations, uh, what we're currently doing now, um, what the transition plans the company has to move to magnetite uh, mining uh, ex extensions, um, and how are we going about underpinning that with the exploration program we have? So we've already acknowledged the Ghana people. I'd also like to acknowledge the Bangala people, the traditional custodians of the land on which we operate on the eastern Air Peninsula, and to pay my respect to their elders past, present and emerging. Um, we've got The artwork we've got on the left there is a a piece by um, two of the traditional owners in uh, Deborah Brown and Jean Miller, and it, it's a representation of the desert meeting the sea. Um, so that circle there uh, represents Wyala and um, <clears throat> our connection with the community. And on the right hand side there, we've got a, um, a group, a part of the cohort of the 2022 Shooting Stars program. Um, this is a program uh, that's uh, occurs across Australia in Wyala, it's sponsored by GFG, uh, and it aims to encourage um, young Indigenous girls and women to con continue and complete their schooling. So we're really pleased to be involved in that. There's the usual disclaimer forward-looking statements for your reference later on. So Wyala, just to put things into context, um, not everybody would necessarily be aware, but Wyala is actually the birthplace of the Australian iron ore industry. Um, the, uh, anyone who's driven uh, from Port Augusta to Perth will have probably gone through uh, Iron Knob. Iron Knob was the uh, birthplace of a mining, iron, systematic iron ore mining in uh, Australia uh, more than 120 years ago. <clears throat> so uh, it's, a, it's a long uh, business. We're not on the scale um, of the Pilbara, but it's a uh, been sustained for, as we say, more than 120 years. Um, so currently, uh, <clears throat> the operations are run by Simic Mining. Um, so Simic Mining is a um, part of the Global GFG Alliance Group. Um, the worldwide group has 35,000 employees, um, is, is active in 30 countries. In Wayala, we've got a workforce between the mining operations and the steelworks of about 3,000 employees and, and contractors. Um, so currently we're mining um, hematite and magnetite, um, but as the hematite resource is um, uh, mined over the next several years, uh, we'll be transitioning very much to magnetite. Um, the magnetite that we have and intend to define will play a major part in the South Australian magnetite strategy. Uh, and it's going to underpin the local economic growth and sustainability of Wyala, the state, um, and our stakeholders. Um, it, it also forms a major part of um, what we call the GFG Green Steel vision. So I'll, uh, I'll just talk a bit about how that impacts. So CN30, um, that is a fundamental component of the Green Steel vision. That, stands for carbon neutral by 2030. Um, that's a very aspirational uh, target, a stretch target for us, but uh, a necessary one because the global steel industry contributes about 8% of emissions and clearly that needs to be um, addressed. So um, the way that we propose to address that is to um, <coughs> do a, a major transformation of the business which will um, see a very significant upgrade in the magnetite business. So here's what we do now. Um, on the left, um, this is our, our supply chain. So we mine, uh, crush, process, and uh, make a slurry um, magnetite concentrate, which we pipe to Wyala, 65 k's away. Um, we make those into pellets at the steelworks, and then that is fed uh, to the conventional blast furnace, so old conventional blast furnace iron making technology. Um, the future, uh, which involves significant capital investment, is to um, 
a, a number of things to introduce a, an increasingly larger proportion of the energy supplied from renewables and also to replace um, coking coal as a reductant in the blast furnace. So that requires us to um, transition to magnetite particularly. And the plan is, whoops, apologies. The plan is to um, be able to produce a direct reduction magnetite pellet, which will then feed into the direct reduction process, produce DRI pellets, and they will go into an electric arc furnace. And together with um, an upgrade to the rolling mills, um, we will produce green steel. Um, and as I said, the energy source will transition from coking coal initially to natural gas and, and ultimately to uh, hydrogen produced from uh, renewables, which will include uh, solar and wind. So the, what we call the magnetite expansion uh, project is, is a, effectively a three-stage project. Stage one is um, already uh, underway and has been for some considerable time. It's uh, based on the 611 million tonne resource that we have in the South Middleback Ranges. And I'll show you some detail on that uh, shortly. Um, and the plan with stage one is that we will go from our current magnetite production of around 2.2 million tonnes per annum concentrate to around 2.5. Um, the big uplift comes with stage two, which we're working on now. Um, that's in pre-feasibility stage study at the moment. So that's the same resource, but with investment in, uh, significant investment in further plant, that sees a tripling of the mag cons production. Um, and I'll talk a bit about that, and I'll finish with some comments on our exploration program. So our exploration program is to uh, assess a, a very large magnetite exploration target that we've um, developed all the way through the Middleback Ranges. Um, and uh, that will see several years worth of dedicated uh, resource definition work. Uh, that has the ability to further double the mag cons production to in excess of 15 million tonnes per year. So that's more than seven times current and extends the mine life and the processing plant life to well in excess of 20 years. So uh, most people will be aware of where we are. We're uh, located on the southeastern portion of the Gawler Craton. Uh, and just zooming in, uh, we have three main mining centres, uh, what we call the South Middleback Range, which is what I'll talk about first, um, the Iron Barren Mining Area in the middle, and Iron Knob to the north. And this is a strike length along the Middleback Ranges of about 65 k's. Um, all those mining areas are serviced by rail, uh, which link back to, to the port. So we're mining hematite um, in the, uh, the Duchess pit down here, um, still mining hematite in a number of places at Iron Barren, and we're currently uh, redeveloping the Iron Monarch pit. Um, so all that material is crushed and screened and goes off to export, most of it for export. The magnetite current mining is conducted in the, uh, the magnet pit here, um, processed on site to produce a, a concentrate, as I mentioned, which is then slurry pipelined into town to a pellet plant. And it produces, I don't know if people have seen pellets, but it's like, uh, they're like little grape-sized things and they, they feed the blast furnace. Some of it goes for export as well. So firstly, on, uh, on the MEP stage two project, um, I'll set this going, but it gets a bit, it might get a bit busy, uh, giddy looking at it. So. Um, what we're showing there is the, uh, the Leapfrog 3D block model from the South Middleback Ranges. Uh, that's an interactive dynamic model that's linked to our database. Um, and on the right-hand side is the, uh, the strat column that we have. The, the key units, the pink one you can see there, which forms the footwall to the mineralisation, is uh, the, are the basement gneisses and granites. Uh, the hanging wall, the blue colour, the light blue colour is the Cook's Gap. Um, Meta sediments, cook, cook gap schist, and the key unit for us is the um, the middle back iron formation, and it's whoops, wrong button. 
its various facies uh, through there. So there's a, a range of different magnetite and hematite facies that form the ion formation. Uh, in the south of the uh, area, um, the magnetite carbonate unit, this MTC, is the dominant unit. But as we move forward uh, through what we call Duchess, that's the Duchess pit there and beyond, and effectively all the way through the rest of the Middleback Ranges, the dominant uh, facies is the magnetite silica, that orange one there. Um, and even though the the presence of mineralisation or the potential presence of mineralisation has been known for some considerable time. It's only in the last uh, probably five years where there's been a metallurgical solution to um, processing that high silica ore, um, which we've now got. So our resource base has gone from 50-ish <clears throat> to 200 to 400 to 600 million tonnes as a result of a lot of further drilling and a lot of other optimisation work over the last several years. We've drilled uh, about 280,000 metres across that uh, area over several decades. About 150,000 metres is um, specifically on the magnetite. Um, and there's a, there's a graphic. We continue to do that work. We've nearly finished uh, a program currently of uh, 22 odd thousand metres of work, which will finish up in about a week. Um, and you can see on the, uh, the map behind the, the magnet pit down here um, going up through the, the Duchess area through there. So the existing MTC resource is sitting predominantly down to the south and it transitions into the magnetite silica resource as we go to the north. Um, <clears throat> we've, we've actually prioritised that program with the aim that over uh, this financial year, we test and hopefully um, bring a significant proportion of our current inferred resource into indicated, which will underpin the first 10 years of production. While that's happening as well, we've got a, quite a significant program of geotech uh, holes for the expanded pit. Now, if we were at diggers and dealers, this would be the time that the music would start and a core tray would come in through the door and across the front and down the aisle, be full of sparkly stuff. Um, everyone would jump up and down. But arguably, magnetite is not quite as aesthetic. So um, rather than do that, I've put a couple of photos in instead. So the one on the top is the MTC, the magnetite carbonate unit. That's a... Um, uh, a massive magnetite unit with um, uh, variable amounts of carbonate through, very much favoured by the process engineers in the plant because it's a lot softer and it has a higher mass recovery than the, the rest of the material. Underneath that you can see the magnetite silica lithology. So this is a banded, generally fine-grained, alternating magnetite silica. Um, fairly predictable, we're finding uh, thicknesses uh, in excess of 400 metres. We just finished drilling a 530 metre hole quite recently on another project. Um, so once we're in this stuff, um, it's pretty uh, fairly consistent and it appears to treat the same wherever we are from what we know so far. Um, moving beyond the stage two, uh, the, the next phase uh, we're calling the exploration phase. So on the left-hand side, you can see uh, an image of the mag, a uh, high-resolution mag. We've got a 50-metre heli mag throughout the whole um, range. Um, the, uh, this is the South Middleback Range that I've just talked about, where we have the, the current magnetite operations. And about eight k's to the north, um, what we call Chieftain West. Um, and you can see that on those two adjacent photos, I've got um, just to blow up of both of those areas at the same scale, um, showing the mag signatures on those. So the Duchess South, which is magnet Duchess South, is the same ore body, it's just a continuation uh, that's being mined at the moment. Uh, very significant amount of holes, as I said. We, by the time Christmas comes, we'll be in excess of 150,000 metres of drilling there. Um, Chieftain West uh, will be going to in January we've got a fleet of three RC rigs uh, and a diamond rig at the moment. 
uh, and the plan for um, the remainder of the financial year at Chieftain West is to complete a nominal 100 by 100 spaced uh, drill pattern, which we're hoping will allow us to declare a, a maiden resource uh, during the course of 2023. So that's the, um, the Chieftain West in a little more detail. The difference between the Magnet Duchess mineralisation and Chieftain West is that we're looking at a, uh, a mirror image of stratigraphy at Chieftain West, just reflecting the regional uh, folding regime. So we've got, uh, uh, this is our current interpretation. Uh, we've got our football basement, gnosis and granites, uh, passing up through a transitional sequence into the MTS unit. So you can see uh, the scale of this is we've got, um, these holes are four to 500 metres, so it's a very thick, predictable sequence. On the eastern side, you can see uh, the Chieftain hematite girthite pit, which is not in operation at the moment. Um, I think this is a good example of just as you put together a geological model, it gets shot down, not, not in a bad way, but this is our current, again, our leapfrog model. Um, we're currently drilling a deep diamond hole um, and we're fortunate enough to have ADI funding, which we're very grateful for. Um, we expected that we were going to see the basement somewhere between 500 and 600 metres. Well, currently we're at 860-ish. Uh, we're getting into this the basement uh, bottom of this thing, which is a, uh, a sulphitic unit interfingering with a dolomite, so we're nearly there, but we're not near the granite yet. So um, what that does to that model basically takes this contact, well, who knows, somewhere steeper. Uh, that may be a battle we fight another day on, but half of my exploration team's here, so we've been haggling about when that's going to stop. Uh, on the right-hand side, uh, you can see that oblique view. Um, the holes that we've completed to date, by the end of this financial year, so June 23, we will have completed that pattern, which will give us 100 by 100. Um, I think anybody who's worked in iron ore in the Pilbara, probably... 200 by 200 is more, more common to give you a resource. Because we're in a complex folded proterozoic terrain um, with three main deformations, and depending on how detailed you want to get, maybe another three or four reactivations of all that, um, we generally have to go to 50 by 50 uh, for uh, a, a resource. Uh, sometimes we'll go to 25. Um, so it's, it's quite complex, uh, has been historically quite complex, particularly in the hematite space, but we're probably pleased to see that the more work we do on the magnetite silica, it does appear to be a little bit more predictable. Dangerous statement to make, but so far. Um, once we've uh, moved beyond the, um, the Chieftain West, first phase of our expansion, this is our exploration pipeline. So we've defined on the basis of uh, high-res magnetics and our uh, drilling. Um, there's not very much magnetite-specific drilling throughout the rest of the range, but there are specific reconnaissance holes that we've done over the last five years. So we believe we've got a defined resource of 3.7 to 5.5 billion tonnes in target, exploration target. That's um, obviously the resource, current mining on the right-hand side, the project that's in PFS moving to DFS shortly, and then all the exploration stuff at the far end. So we've got a number of years ahead of us, even retaining three rigs going full-time to, uh, to work through that. So... Um, we, we believe we've actually got a generational uh, magnetite opportunity here. Um, we're, our high res, as I said, our high res heli mag is 50 metres. We've actually got a portion of that that's 25, so 30 metre terrain clearance is fantastic. Um, we do a lot of processing through consultants to um, help us define structures and targeting. Um, we've already got our uh, 600 million tonne resource. Um, and as I say, we, we believe that we've got the potential in our exploration target to um, 
add several billion more tons of uh, target, uh, sorry, of resource. And this is what will underpin the, the future of our transformation to green steel. Uh, it gives Wyala a uh, very significant extension of life um, and uh, that will have obviously economic benefits both locally and to the state. So um, that's our story. I um, uh, just wanted to acknowledge to our, uh, our contracting partners. Um, we have many people who make up the effort that we've got going. Four drilling rigs, uh, 15 people in the exploration team. Um, we've got external contractors doing earthworks, our labs, um, our field supply people, um, our environmental consultants, and, and particularly our internal teams, our um, mining teams, our tech services team, our mine planning guys, environment and rig, um, and uh, yeah, we look forward to coming back and, and updating you in future and, and delivering a long and sustainable future for the company, for stakeholders, for Wyala and for the state. Thank you very much. <laughs>